By way of introduction, I'd just like to use uh, an analogy. Many of us who come from the Western world are accustomed to radio programs, television programs, where we have a program, and then there's a commercial. We tolerate the moments of the commercial in order to get back to the program. But if we could do without the commercial, we surely would. The programs need a sponsor. I would like to submit this as an analogy between how the Jews relate, Torah Jews relate to human existence and the Gentile world relates to human existence and even spirituality. My submission is that Others relate to spirituality as the commercial on the program of life. They tolerate the moments of spirituality in order to get back to the program. And the Jew says, uh-uh, that's not the way it is. The sponsor, the sponsor of it all and us all included the entirety, the whole package, the whole kit and caboodle of human existence, the material, the spiritual, as part of the enterprise of our urgency to connect all that is to its creator. Everything, the entire material world, when the Medrash says that Avram Avinu, the patriarch Abraham, was the first to refer to God, the Creator, as Odon al Haots, the master of the earth, we know that others before him, Noah, there were other tzaddikim, that related to the world, but Avlom is the first to make the connection that earthliness is part of the resource that the Rebbeinu Shalom, God, the Creator, has placed at our disposal to utilize, not to ignore, not to leapfrog, but to harness and connect to our source. With this proposition in mind, I'd like to try and explain what seems to be a very esoteric and enigmatic Gemara. Gemara says that on the Day of Judgment, the non-Jewish world will be taken up nation after nation, interrogated what they did, good, evil, so firstly, they're going to make the case that everything they built, their empires, their buildings, their castles, their bridges, was all for the Jewish people. Ben Shalom shoots them down, says, nonsense. You did it for yourselves. And invariably for very negative, nefarious reasons. Biskarov asks, they're talking to God. How could they try such a foolish tactic to say we, we built it for Klal Yisrael? Answers the Rav, because that's the truth. The truth is that it had to serve some purpose to move forward the plan of the Jewish people maturing, fulfilling its destiny, and only then will the world get to where it has to be. So that bridge was built because one day somebody was on his way to buy a lulav, somebody was on his way to get to the plane 
to come to us, Sameach. Somebody was on his way to do chesed for some almona lo'aleinu. That's the truth. But the Rebbe Shalom shoots them down. That wasn't your motivation, so you're not going to get credit for it. Now, in that cosmic dialogue that takes place, they ask for a mitzvah. Okay. We stand rebuffed, rebutted, but we want another shot. And the Ben Hashem says, I have a mitzvah, an easy mitzvah. It's called sukkah. Gives them the mitzvah of sukkah. They immediately run out and build sukkahs. The Ben Hashem allows a blisteringly hot sun to come out. It's impossible to sit in the sukkah. They're outraged, angry. They kick the sukkah and they run out. Many of the commentaries, I'm sure many of you are thinking, the halacha is that somebody who's a mitzvah, who's in a state of pain in the sukkah, he feels uncomfortable, doesn't have to sit in the sukkah, shouldn't sit in the sukkah. He doesn't kick the sukkah when he leaves. We always have an exit strategy. Any good businessman will tell you, you make a deal, you need an exit strategy. Where should all the Jews be in El Tisal? What should be the law of this land? Not British common law, halacha. But we have, we have a second best, we have a contingency plan. There's a galut plan that Klal Yisrael has. That plan is always in the drawer. Tochnit Megira, they call it here, right? We have a second best plan and a third best plan because life is in flux and we don't know what kind of situations and circumstances we will merit and deserve. And we have to have a game plan for each contingency. It's raining, you're going out of the sukkah. It's blisteringly hot, you go out of the sukkah. But that's, their goal wasn't to serve the will of the Creator. If that is your goal, then you go to the second best plan. But if that's not your goal, if your goal is, I want to be the one who's doing this mitzvah, then if I'm frustrated and deterred from doing the mitzvah, then I'm angry. So they fail. That's the sequence in the Gemara. Question then has to be asked. There are a lot of mitzvahs that are, you might call kalot, easy mitzvahs. Why does the Rebbe choose sukkah over any other mitzvah to give the Gentile community? And that should be the arbiter, the differentiator that should separate the men from the boys, the Jews from the non-Jews. Why sukkah? There's a famous gro, you may have heard mentioned before sukkahs or over sukkahs, the Shia Shalyom of the first day of Sukkot, I involve Tilim. The Pasuk says, the Pasuk says, Vayahi b'shalem suko umonoser b'tzion. Two mitzvahs, says the Vilna Gaon, are being alluded to here. Vayahi b'shalem, the shleimut of suka and monato b'tzion, his dwelling place in Zion. Two mitzvahs, says the Vilna Gaon, one enters in to the mitzvah with one's entire body. Sukkah and Yishuv Eretz Yisrael. Those two mitzvahs encompass the totality of the human experience. While I'm sleeping, mitzvah, because I was koveya, my place to sleep in the sukkah in Eretz Yisrael. Early on, at the inception of the country, somebody once defined a Zionist is when 
Mr. A tries to collect money from Mr. B so that Mr. C can live in Israel. That's a Zionist. The ideal fulfillment is a mitzvah shebegufa, to build the issue here. It is true, Talmud the God, the Pasa Shulchan, says that helping the Yishuv exist here, you're fulfilling, you're promoting the mitzvah of Yishuv El Tisal. I'll call upon the two mitzvahs one enters in with their entire body. People, when they hear this for the first time, often ask, what about mikvah? Contrary to the behavior of certain chassidim, there's no significance to sitting in the mikvah longer. Mikvah, you're in and you're out, and the taira comes, takes place when you exit the mikvah. El Tisal, the shihiya, the duration of time in El Tisal, every minute, every second is a mitzvah. Sukkah, every second, every minute that you're there is a mitzvah. Okay. So these two mitzvahs encompass the totality of the human experience. Bolak sends telegram to Bilam. Am Yotza me Mitzrayim. People went out of Mitzrayim. The Chiso saying, oh, they've covered the essence of the land, the core of the land, the appearance of the land. Simple readers, what? There are so many of them, you don't see the ground. Says the Svasamis, there's another level of meaning here. The chisa et ein ha'aretz, they've changed our attitude towards the material world. We used to be able to indulge casually, comfortably, recklessly, randomly. These people come along and they say, wait a minute, all that land, all those fruits, all those vegetables, all those trees, everything that walks on this earth, everything that grows from the earth, is a potential resource to be squeezed for its spiritual energy. Everything has spiritual energy. Needs the language of the Zohar, sparks of sanctity. And it's only that way that we can access spirituality is through, because we are physical beings. You recollect? Tisha B'Av time, we talked about the Chazonish who would often say, a Jew has to learn to live with paradoxes, contradictions. And he submitted as evidence a prophet to be eligible for prophecy has to be in a state of simcha. Said the Chazonish, that means that Yemiyor Novi who authored Echo Lamentations, had to be in a state of simcha when he wrote Echo. Are you talking? We have suggested in the past that the source of that could very well be the machlokas between the Beis Yosef and the Ramor on the brocha, Ashe Yotza ends with Mafli Lasses. Awesome, this creation. Beis Yosef learns in a very straightforward manner, this human body, what a machine, what a creation. The intricacy, its complexity, how everything dovetails and works and complements each other, fascinating. Only God could do this. And remember, it's God who created the man and men who create computers. 
So as complex as the computers are, they're merely a function and an extension, a consequence of this creation. And so, the Ramor comes along and says, a human being is a patent contradiction. We know there are angels. We know there are animals. But here, the Rebbe has taken two separate realms of existence, the animalistic and the spiritual, and put them together in one entity called man, Odom. He's created in a state of contradiction. And all of human existence is how to resolve this contradiction. That is what a human being is challenged to do. So he's created a state of contradiction. And the Jew has a game plan on how to resolve the contradiction. The resolution of the contradiction inheres in how to capture and harness physicality in the service of spirituality. Not to deny it. That's foolishness. That's playing ostrich. That's making believe the physical doesn't exist. It doesn't work. But to capture it, to harness it, to use it in the service of spirituality, that's the game plan. Rameh Simcha finds this theme in the Posik dealing with the Korban Pesach. Mishchu Kru, Pu, collect. That same animal that was used for idolatry by the Egyptians, the same animal. That same Seh, idolatrized. Take it and now use it for a mitzvah. Beautiful piece over there. You have to see it inside. Mishchu Kru, Parshas Bo. And he explains that a human being, in as much as he is this complex of the spiritual and the physical, has a need to concretize ideas. He has a need to render that which is on the conceptual level and to give it concretion, to give it tangibility, to bring it to the level of the empirical, that I can experience it. The perversion of that is idolatry. The healthy expression of it is healthy expression, mitzvahs, tefillin, tzitzis, lulav, arovas, hadassim, esri, sukkah. Why these particular items in these particular fashions? I don't know why it couldn't have been anything else, but I do know that this is the way the Rebbe Nisham created us and the world, and we are created from the same game plan because the Torah and Halacha were the blueprint for the creation of the universe, so my hand is the way it is, and this hand is the way it is, so that I can hold the Lulav and the Esrig, and I can put on the tefillin because there's a special relationship, not accidental, not arbitrary. It's not superimposed from without. I am created in such a manner as to be able to exploit this relationship and unlock the code of this spirituality that resides within the physical universe. Do it the right way and it works, and you become a different person. Fail, and you fail. Such is the game plan in its ideal. Sukkah represents this concept. Sukkah, the entirety of man. So it would be very fitting 
makes a lot of sense then that that would be the mitzvah that is given to the non-Jewish world. Can you use the physical universe for spirituality? Are you capable of it? Invariably, in the non-Jewish world, it's either total abandon to the aesthetic experience of indulgence, the Greeks, or Christianity, lahavdil, from our position. Spirituality is about asceticism, monasticism, denying the physical, making believe it doesn't exist, which invariably leads to perversions and distortions. It's a lie. Because you can't make believe it doesn't exist. It does exist. We are physical creatures. And either you harness it and redeem it, elevate it. That's why when a non-Jew sent a sacrifice to the base Migdash, invariably it was a Korban Ola, completely consumed on the Mizbeach. Couldn't be a Shlomim. Why? A Shlomim, some is eaten. Either you're involved in spirituality or in physicality. Never the twain shall meet. The Jew says, you got it wrong. You can't deny the physical, it doesn't go away. I like to connect this to Nubsad Yegon, who said, Rameh Simcha brings this of Sadiagon and Parshas Metzera in the Haftorah there. Rav Sadiagon said, just like only God, only the Rebbein could create Yesh Ayan, something from nothing, similarly, only God can make nothing from something. Again, just like only God could make something from nothing, only God can make nothing from something. Man can change the state of something. He can move from liquid to gas to solid and back around again. But he can't make it go away. That's our problem with nuclear waste. But that's a core principle, it's axiomatic to our thinking. Nothing goes away. Either you capture it and redeem it and harness it and use it positively or it's going to haunt you and dog you in a negative manner. It doesn't go away. Nothing goes away. It's there. It's waiting around the bend to ambush you one way or another. And so, Sukkah, most perfectly, and Elvis is so. First Rashi we're going to read, Rashi talks about, why do we have to start Chumash with my Sabratius? Start with the first mitzvahs. Chodesh is Elochem, Kiddush HaChodesh, Korban Pesach, Whatever mitzvahs we need. Rashi says, Koyach Masov, that the, the Rebbe wants to put it on record that Am Yisrael were aiders to this, as no other religion, Lahavdil, would ever claim that an entire people bore witness to the inception of that event which connected the mission statement of its carriers to the statement. Never happened since. And it's predicted that it will never happen. Rather audacious for somebody not just to make such a claim, but to predict that it, nobody else will make the claim. You know why never, no one else ever made the claim? That an entire people bore witness to the inception of the miracle of that religion, Lahavdil? You know why? Because it can't get started. It can't happen by definition. Because as soon as you say an entire people, wait a minute, my Uncle Sam wasn't there. Wait a minute, wait a minute, my cousin Lucy wasn't there. 
You can't say everybody. As soon as you say everybody, you're stuck. And that's why it only happened one time in history. I'll call upon them, this people, this nation has this plan. And they are given a land. Why do we need a land? Why can't Jews be like others? Like other religions, Lahavda. You can be a Jew in Baghdad, Brooklyn, Buenos Aires. Why do you have to be an Al-Tisso? Why do we need a self-contained political unit? Why do we need that entity? Because only then does it encompass the entire person. The first thing Yoshua does when he enters El Tisrael is to legislate urban legislation. What may you grow and what may you not grow within the bounds of the city limits? How to make a perfect society? How to create that society? And for that, every time a Jew is living anywhere else in the world, he's in a state of cultural spiritual schizophrenia. There's a certain pizzuli shoot. Again, we have a game plan for how to deal with galut, but it's galut. And of course, as long as the law of this land is British common law and not the halacha, there's a galut here. Galut Yavan was here as well. That's also, but we have a game plan on how to deal with that, but it's, it's a contingency plan. It's not the lechat it's a bidiyavid. So what's the lechat chila? The preferred plan is that the totality of the human experience should be governed by the halacha. Can there, will there be differences of opinion within halacha? Of course. But that's all within the grid of the halachic enterprise and debate. That's part of the symposium of the halachic community, right? the, the ultimate time machine. And the Panevich when he was describing in the Beit Knesset, Agodl, what Panevich was going to look like before it was built, two years before the Koma Medina even, he had the plan to build the Panevich Yeshiva, so he said, Rabbi Akiva, and Rabbi Yishmael will be sitting over there. And Abay and Rav over here. And the Rambam and the Ramban over there. And given his oratorical talents as he described the symposium and the discussion, people got up to look to get a glimpse of Ravina and Ravashi, Abay and Rav, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yishmael, because they were there. But in truth, they are there. They are here. Why are they here? Because just like the halachic experience encompasses the totality of the human being physically and spiritually, that means that if it encompasses the spiritual me, it's that part of me that was at Sinai. And it's that part of me then that echoes all through every base medrash and every place where Jews sit and open up a daf gemorah. There are no boundaries, no limitations. It explodes all of the seeming limitations of time and space. And that's exactly what happens every time we open up a Daf Gemara. We're not quoting what Rabbi Akiva said. We are re-entering his mindset. What did he mean by what he says? We're climbing into his mindset. And that's every time we learn a Rashi and every time we learn a Tesis. That's what we're doing. We're entering into their mindset to understand what prompted them to say this and to say it in this manner. Because there's no such thing as any casual, casually expressed idea, syntax, 
or diction. Everything is exact because it's all imbued with Ruach HaKodesh. And that connects the Jew with every Jew in history and it connects the Jew with every Jew on the planet at every given time. So it's an amazing paradox. By being very, very local, provincial, chauvinistic, by wanting to promote my community, that's how I'm reconnecting with the universal community in space and in time. By being more particularist, I'm being more global. I'm being more universalist. That's the only way to get there for the Jew. The paradox reaches a very, very beautiful culmination. Yaakov Avinu, the tour says that the Yom Tevim, Pesach, Shvuas, Sukkot correspond to the patriarchs. Avram is Pesach, that's the initial inception of the relationship between God and the Jews. Yitzchak is Torah, reaches another dimension of, we call it Gvura, of disciplining the impetus of Chesed, containing it, but the ideal balance is achieved in Yaakov. Yaakov is Sukkot. The Ramban asked the question in Parshas Lech Lecho. We see that Avram went to the universal community, but Yikra B'Shem Hashem, he called, called them to do mitzvahs. Yitzchak did it. We do not find that by Yaakov, says the Ramban. Why? Because Yaakov now has a different game plan. Is he after? Is his goal perfection of the universe? Yes. But now he's going to do it by creating a centripetal force rather than a centrifugal force. He's going to create a certain energy, a density of energy within Klal Yisrael to create an ideal community of perfecting this balance between body and soul and that an entire nation does it and again and again we have the idea in Chazal and the Rishenim that when the Beis Mikdash is up and running and Klal Yisrael is doing its thing as they should, as we should then foreign nations will come, they'll visit, they'll say, wow, it works. And a significant number will say, let's join the team. <coughs> but how? By us being more Jewish, not less Jewish. So Yaakov, Sukkot, Sukkot is in and in itself an apparent contradiction. Sukkot, we bring sacrifices for the Gentile nations. Rabbi Bechai says that the measurements of a sukkah are seven width, length, seven by seven, and height has to be ten for him. 70, corresponding to the 70 sacrifices that are brought to sustain and maintain the nations of the world. We want to support them. We want them to thrive. But they should be fulfilling the Sheva Mitzvahs of Bnei Noach. They should own up to the source and the reason that they're here. And if they want to become part of this expeditionary force this Golani core called the Jewish people, they can join. And we welcome them. All of the 
difficulties that we seem to make in filtering who joins and who doesn't join is in order to make sure they know what they're getting into, to make sure they really mean it. But if they mean it, we have to do acrobatics, shminiot bavir, to help them get to where they want to get. So Yaakov represents Sukkot. Sukkot is the time that we are engaging the universal community, bringing sacrifices for them. There are those who say, the man yeidu, Sukkot is the only place of the three regolim, the three yom tevim, that it says in order that they should know. Simple read seems to be, it says, Lidoro Seichem, for your generations should know. But others who read, Leman Yedu Dero Seichem, that Shoshafti the Benisham was Moshiv Kladisel, Boti Osom, them from from Mitzrayim, Eretz Mitzrayim, to the Midbar, to come to Eretz Hence, it's a mitzvah of Pirsume Nisa. The going out and building sukkahs in the street, contrary to the conventional wisdom, counterintuitive, do it in the, in the month of Tishrei, not in Pesach. Make a statement to the world. Again, one could make the case that it's talking about the world means Klal Yisrael. But there is a case to be made that it means the entire world. Everybody should see that we're building sukkahs. The Ibn Ezra is quoted when Avram is negotiating to save Sodom, says 50 tzaddikim, 40, 30. He says, betocha ir, in the city, says the Ibn Ezra, that they are fulfilling, they're expressing Yiras Hashem Bifahesya publicly. So the simple read again of the Ibn Ezra seems to be that that is the measure of their tzidkis, is that they had the courage to do it publicly. That's testimony to the quality. Perhaps we could learn that it means that even though they were doing it publicly, the others tolerated it, though that they were doing it publicly. So it's a comment on the rest of the community there as well. They allowed them to do their thing. It's another possible read, but it seems to be not the simple read of the Ebenezer. So Yaakov, Yaakov is the one who works from within Klal Yisrael. Rabbi Simcha uses the analogy that Avrom, when Chazal, the Gemara Yuma, wants to cite an instance to give evidence that Avrom fulfilled rabbinic mitzvahs, it says, Eruve Tavshilin. Even mitzvahs of preparing the Eruve Tavshilin, the mixing of certain foods to prepare, that we're in the process of preparing, we already have the meal prepared. But the idea is mixture, mixing things. That symbolizes that Avram went to the world community. He didn't have a cheder miyun. He went to the world community. And so did Yitzchak. Yaakov is goes at tchum. Up till here you can go, and beyond there you don't go. Yaakov is also the first one that we find the word sukkah used. He built a sukkah for his cattle, for his acquisitions. Also, Avram called the Mokom Hamigdash, called it Har, a mountain. Yisra called it Soda. Yaakov called it Bayit. Bayit is the first introduction of Mechitzas. A Mechitza keeps what's in 
in and what's out, out. That's a sukkah. That's mechitas. That's trum. So now Yaakov. But he's the one who represents sukkahs. Sukkahs, I want to help the world community. I want to be universalist. And two guys wake up in the morning and they want to service the universal community. One guy goes down to what we used to call in our, in Manhattan of my time, the Bowery. There were a lot of alcoholics that lived there, very brittle matchstick men. Guy walks over, he wants to be an altruist. So he picks up one of these brittle men and he holds him up against the lamppost, but he's got to stand there because as soon as he walks away, the guy falls. Has he done an act of altruism? Yes. But then there's another guy that wakes up in the morning and says he's going to lock himself in his room. He's going to develop his genius and his talents and his abilities. And he becomes uh, Beethoven. He becomes uh, Picasso. He becomes a Melville. I think we can make the case that the second kind of person affected more sensibilities of more people in a deeper way, in a more lasting way. The havdil, but comparable. The havdil means it's not exactly the same, because then it would be it. But it has certain features of comparison. So I say lahavdil because it's not be'etzim kodesh. Lahavdil. Read now for Am Yisrael that this is a nation of artists. And we have said we're going to lock ourselves in our room, our communities, our Bote Midroshim, and we're going to develop our genius. And we're going to say, okay, now, world, you can exploit who we are and what we are, what we've produced. Any Jew at any point in history that is supportive of any positive movement politically, nationally, in where he finds himself, legitimate. If it becomes the priority of his energies, it's counterproductive for the world because only we are working on a comprehensive, long-range program. Everybody else, remember the story of the dike that burst and the boy who put his finger in the dike to hold it? It's going to work for a little while, but you're going to need an engineer to come along and fix the dike. We are the architects that are working on rebuilding the dike. We're the architects that have the plan for humanity and for history. And every time, if I get another little Jewish boy into a cheder, if I get another Jew into a kolo, if I have another family going to Taira Samishpocha, if I have another Jew, a Balabos, learning another Daf Yomi, I'm contributing to the rebuilding of the dike. Only then does it have a universal plan. Only then does it have a plan that can hold and can work. Jewish history is replete with false messiahs. Impatience. There's an adolescent urgency for immediate gratification spiritually as well. We want quick solutions. And therefore, okay, so we'll be a light unto the nations. Let's join them. It's not only counterproductive for us, it's counterproductive for them. 
And Yaakov embodies the essence of that paradox. Because Yaakov is Sukkot. That's the time when we are helping, promoting the case, the needs to sustain the world community. But Yaakov is the one who wrestles with the angel of Esau. Yaakov has to navigate the obstacle course of being in the house of Lovon. Yaakov teaches us that we have to keep the end goal in mind, but know the game plan is for me to be Yaakov Dick within the shift they call, within the game plan of the halacha. And so Yaakov represents on the one hand mechitzes, sukkah, trum, bias, mechitza. Everything has to work from within. And then that force, that energy, that condensed, concentrated energy impacts the world community. And those Jews who are in a hurry to be like them, one of them, from within them, not only doesn't it work, it's counterproductive for every level, us and them. Historically, again and again, And so, two things that the Goyim have an allergic response to, an intellectually and spiritually allergic response to. One is sukkah, and that's why that's the Arbeiter. And the Yom Adin, Mitzvah Kala, they can't handle sukkah. And they cannot handle us being in El Tisoil. Because the only reason to be here is because this land is a spiritually elevated land that has resources that connect with the neshama of the Jew. And only the Jew can make this work. Posik says, the Ramban says, it's already a Posik of Nechoma, of consolation within the Teichacho, that this land will not work for any of the other. It won't work for anybody else. I don't know how many people in the room here were here after the Six Day War. You didn't need ways, you didn't need a map to determine what had been in Jewish hands and what had been in Arab hands. Whatever was in Arab hands was desolate. It hadn't worked. It didn't grow. Whatever had been in Jewish hands grew. That posik, that nevuah, it still echoes through the devas. So two intolerable features of Klal Yisrael. Sukkah, the totality of the human experience. The chisos ain't no they've changed our attitude towards the physical universe. That representative of Amolek, descendant of Amolek, World War II, in his book, Mein Kampf, Yemach Shemoy V'Zichroi, writes, he's taking out after the Jews because they're the conscience of the world. That's why we're the conscience of the world. 
Because we say everything is part of the broadcast, even the commercial. The commercial is part of the message. It's not a moment of interruption for spirituality. That's an integral part, and it has to thread its way and weave its way through every facet of our individual and national existence. And that's the ultimate simcha. What a, what a fascinating final paradox. You're telling me, go out of your house, sit in a temporary dwelling, because this is the time of taking the abundance, the produce from the fields, you're going to feel on high, prosperous, we have to put you back, pigeonhole you back where you belong. Temporary, it's all temporary. That should be the time of peak simcha? You're telling me this is the time of peak simcha? Yeah, the time of peak simcha is when you don't expect from the physical more than it can deliver. If you live in that fantasy, you're going to be in a constant state of melancholy. When you understand it's a resource and a platform for spirituality, that brings the simcha. Finally, Posik in Yeshayahu says, quoted by the Ramban and others, Amzu yotzalti li. I created this people for me, to me. Tilosi yisapel. They should tell my praise. Benishim doesn't need my praise. But they have to live it out and demonstrate it. Fascinatingly enough, I just took note. This posik is Perik Mem Gimel, Posik Chof Aleph in Yeshayahu. Could say this posik is the credo of the Jew. This is our anthem, our marching orders in history. Amzu Yatzatili, I created this people for me. Tilosi Yisapir, they should tell my praise. Why not for me, but to connect them and the world to the source? That posik, Mem Gimel Gam. Chofal of Ach. In Kolatera Kula, Gam is a ribui. To include, to be inclusive. Ach is a mute. To exclude. I suggest that that's the fascinating tightrope that Claudia Sol has to walk, that Yaakov walked with creating the shifty core that sustains the nations of the world. Gam, the hanhog of Gam, embracing the world. But ach, to know where to be exclusive and where we have to maintain our identity and not forfeit who we are and what we are at the expense of our mission statement in the expense of the world. And that's what brings to Vayisa Ach Sameach. El Tisol is one big sukkah to be inclusive of the totality of the human experience. That's what Yishev El Tisol is about. And that's why there have been more headlines and more critique of Am Yisrael and El Tisol. New York Times leftist, supported, read, Meshuggah. Millions of people are being murdered and marauded around the world. Tiny little countries occupied so much of your imagination and your interest. Why? Because deep down they cannot come to terms with sukkah, and they can't come to terms with us being here. And it's incumbent upon us to bring that simcha of shlemus, 
to pull it all together. Chag Sameach.